Hey there, Wayne DeFrancesco here again, coming to you on uh, YouTube and also on WayneDeFrancesco.com. Today I'm going to take a little departure from my usual swing analysis, and I'm going to give a little close-up study of what happens at impact when the golf club hits the ball, courtesy of some of the high-speed cameras used uh, on uh, television. So now some of the cameras that uh, we use when we teach, we can do this too, but, but these shots are by the best players in the world. and Thus, when we examine what's going on at impact, we can pretty much surmise that that's the right idea. Now the one on the left here is a shorter iron shot. I don't know if that's a wedge or a, looks like maybe a gap wedge or a, some sort of a lofted club. So this is uh, actually Tiger Woods. You can see the Nike club there. So here's what we want to want to take a look at. So something to consider when the ball sits on the ground. Yeah. The ball isn't sitting up on the top of the grass. If you look at this ball here, you'll see that part of that ball has disappeared. Now, if you were to sit a ball on top of your the face of your watch, you can feel the ball settle in on one dimple and balance there. But if you rest it on the back of your hand, it's pretty obvious that more than one dimple is hitting your hand. When the ball sits on the grass, the weight of the ball pushes the ball into the grass. So we know that when the ball is sitting on a putting green, that since the ball sits in its own depression made of its weight against the grass, that we need about three or four degrees of loft to launch the ball and roll it correctly. The fairway grass is longer and weaker than the grass on the putting green, so the ball sits down more. So you can see here, that that ball is sitting down a little bit, even on the perfect tight fairway. Now, oh, so you can imagine that you know if you're playing at your course and the fairways aren't like fringes or putting greens like they are on a tour sometimes, that the ball sits down even more. So let's watch Tiger's club approach the ball. Now, here's what happens: this club has just reached the ground right about there. Okay, so he is not, we'll know when he hits the ball. So now, so notice how the, the edge of the club is descending. So right about now, so there's the, there's the contact point right there. So look where the club is. If you measured that little bit of club from, from there to the bottom, that's about how far that thing is against into the ground. So let's say that the edge of the club has reached the bottom of the ball, thus the club has touched the grass. Now you got to remember that when you look at the ground, you see grass, roots, and then, a, then dirt. So a divot is obviously lower down than the top of the grass. It's also lower than the bottom of the grass because then there's some roots and then there's the dirt. So watch what happens. The ball hits the face. Now it separates. It's gone. You can still see the V on the back of the club. Now watch. Gone. Now here comes the divot. So the ball's gone. So this is all about hitting the ball essentially before you hit the ground. Now is that really happening? Not really, but the club doesn't feel like it hits the ground. The ground would be underneath the grass into the dirt. So the ball gets struck before the club descends into the ground. So now look at the size of this divot. Okay, So obviously the club was descending and in the ground long enough to take a divot that's probably four or five inches long there. And that's a fairly average divot for a wedge, and then with a longer club it would be a little bit maybe shorter, sometimes longer, depending on the, how the fairways are doing that day, if they're wet. Okay, 
So that's that's interesting, and that's that's pretty cool there. Now another thing that's interesting is when the ball takes off, the club is always going to be going to the left and closing. It can't go down the line because it's an arc. The club comes in on an angle. So here's Camilo Villegas. So if we dot where the ball is here, and then we take a look at where the ball goes, and we'll mark its flight here. So there's the exit direction of this ball that away. So you can see his feet are open to where the ball is taken off, but watch the club approach. So there's the shaft impact. I want you to go around. There we go. So, so much for swinging the club down the line and keeping the face square. So that never happens. I always try to make sure that people understand that even though good players sometimes talk about chasing the ball down the line or keeping the club square as long as they can, that's not what is really happening. And if it's helping them, that's fine. But it's not helping average players who, when they try to do that, simply block the ball out to the right or shank it. So once again, if we look at the the nature of contact here from a little further away. You can still see club there, the ball's coming up, the club descends and goes on around. So there's a guy on the internet who actually is fairly popular and he has decided that you're not supposed to hit down on the ball. It's the worst thing in the world. It makes people come over the top. Now, I don't know where that comes from. I actually like to watch good players hit the ball and try to figure out what's going on. And I've never seen anybody that was any good didn't take a divot, especially with a wedge. Now, here's a, an extreme example. So here's how the club gets into the ground past the ball. So here's Mickelson. Now, this was at Pebble Beach, and he's trying to knock one down. It was uh, an uphill shot into that par 5 on the back. He's got an 8 iron from about 135. The wind's in his face. The fairways are wet. Now, here's impact. Check out the check out the forward lean of the shaft. So he's got that shaft lean 13, 14 degrees. Now watch the the sustain here. Now this is an effort to keep the ball low, so he's not going to break his left wrist down. Now look at that. Uh. Look at this divot. I mean, the ground literally explodes. It's pretty funny. Okay. Now, you might think that as that club travels past the ball that the face was staying square, but that is not the case. As we can see, the face is always going to close. Now, if you're cutting the ball or hitting a shorter shot, the face will appear not to close as fast. So there we go. Now, here's a shot out of the rough. Now, here's, here you can see why it's hard to control a ball out of the rough. Because of the length of the grass, when the club approaches, you can't approach from steep enough to avoid all the grass. So the grass starts to build up, slow the club down a little bit, and get in the way of impact. Now again, what I prefer to do is think about trying to hit the ball before the ground anyway, and then I just factor the grass in, but I'm trying to, trying to get myself to hit it as cleanly as possible. Sometimes that would mean, out of the rough, steepening the swing maybe and, and aiming a little left and hitting a cut shot, which will give you a little steeper blow. But you can see that club's way down there below the surface digging it up. Okay. Now there's a 
longer iron shot. Again, same idea. Ball comes off the face. And club, see the toe turn in, the club descends, turns in, and goes around and closes. Cool. Now, I had one in here where you could actually, let's see, find it. Okay, where is a driver? So you can see that with the driver, obviously, <laughs> don't hit the ground. That's the biggest difference between the driver and the iron shot. Don't hit the ground. So with the driver, it does not behoove you to forward lean the shaft very much, if at all. I'd have to ask somebody about this tilting of the of the driver face down like that. I'm sure there's a reason for that, but uh, I don't think I'd really know what it was. No, I had one. No, I guess I don't have it. All right. So anyway, the big things are that the the club is going to catch the ball leaning forward. It's going to hit the ball first. Now here's the sand. Sand is very difficult because you've got to get the ball on the face before you go below the level of the ball. So it's very difficult to hit a clean bunker, fairway bunker shot in soft sand because think about how the ball sits down. So on tour, they don't really allow the bunkers to get fluffy, so the ball sits up. You know, but at your club, you might hit it in the fairway bunker on the first hole, and you get in there, and a quarter of the ball is below the surface. Well, there's no way you're going to hit that in the face. You're just going to have to blade it a little bit or hit it fat. So you're pretty much dead when those things sit down. But notice you still, people talk about picking these shots. That's not that easy to do. The best bet is just to hit the ball cleanly the way you normally do, or, or if you don't normally do that, it's a really good place to practice getting clean contact in a fairway bunker. All right, so I hope you thought that was uh, interesting, and we'll see you next time.